Good afternoon, and welcome back to Hirschbach, uh, where we're going to do our part two of the I Want to Learn the Organ series, or whatever we called it. And um, before we get into that, it's going to be very sort of technically, how do I practice sort of stuff today. Um, but before we get into that, I want to once again say thank you. Last week in the Gattenbach video, I introduced the idea that um, subscribers or viewers might want to donate something towards the channel. And several have, and I couldn't believe it. Several actually um, came up with a rather generous donation, which I never really expected. Um, I contacted them to say thank you, obviously, and um, asked if you know I could do something for them in return publicly. And they said, nope, we're quite happy just to spend uh, to donate, sorry, a little bit of money, and uh, hope you know you buy something useful for the channel with that. And that's exactly what we intend to do. Everything that we sort of gain or earn, as it were, from this um, uh, from the channel will be reinvested into the channel in equipment for example now when we're recording here especially these little videos we just use the iPhone we don't use any external microphones or things when we visit other organs though I've always got two microphones with me to pick up the organ you know as well as I can now these are microphones I've had for years they're not bad in any way and they do the job in smaller churches but Imagine we're going to a huge church. For example, we've got on the list a church down in the south of Germany, which is almost as big as Cologne Cathedral. It's absolutely huge. And you know, in order to record that organ properly in that wonderful acoustic, you can't just stand there with two little microphones and hope it's going to sound good. We need something a bit more professional for that. And I think the sound is more important than the, than the uh, video, as it were. But other people have said, ah, you know, video quality needs to be better as well if this is going to be a full-time thing. So at some point, we'll probably invest in a slightly better quality camera that can, you know, pick, pick these things up. Churches tend to be dark sometimes. So, okay, it's, it's spring now, but we're getting there. So anyway, um, on my website, I've put an extra, si an extra page on. It's called uh, Equipment. And it's what we use at the moment, and I've got a little wish list of things that I would maybe like to add to that. So if you're thinking of maybe donating something towards the channel, then that's what we're going to be spending it on in the future. So once again, thank you. Um, I think we'd better get on with learning the organ now. Right, here we go. I'm going to make myself very unpopular, and I'm going to say, I'm just going to say it, okay? The most important thing when you're starting to learn the organ are your scales. Uh-oh got to learn your skills sorry about that so um, a couple of people posted in some comments last week what do I actually need to play the organ we covered that a little bit last time but okay a lot of people say do I need to be able to play the piano first to play the organ yes and no it helps if you already play the piano but I personally don't think it's uh, necessary a lot of organ teachers won't touch somebody until they've got at least two years of piano experience yeah uh, I have no idea why they do that I accept people who don't have any musical skills whatsoever. Um, why? Because if you're going to learn it, why not learn it all at once? Okay, it helps if the fingers, you know, have sort of the, the muscle memory and the fingers have sort of worked out where all the keys are and things like that. So all you need to do is add the feet and then you learn to read three lines of music instead of two. You know, okay, that's a, that's a coordination thing, okay? But if you're going to learn everything at once, why not? It's not difficult. I personally don't think it's any more difficult to do it that way than having learned piano first. Some people say coming from piano to organ, you've got, you know, you've got, it is a slightly different technique and that, that for some people takes longer to learn than if they just start out on the organ itself. So it's up to you. I have no preferences. I really don't mind if anyone has piano experience or not. We start at the beginning. And like I said, we're going to start with scales. Now, remember for all those people when they started learning the piano as little children, and they got their hands wrapped with rulers or whatever, yeah? Maybe that doesn't happen anymore. It did in my day. Um, and we learned our C major scale. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, three, two, one. Okay? And then the piano lehrer said, okay, uh, piano teacher, sorry, I'm speaking German again. Piano teacher then said, okay, now we will learn G major. Why do we learn G major? Because it's got the same fingering. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, three, two, one. Okay? And then we learn D major and A major and E major and B major. They've all got the same fingering. How easy is that? I don't do it that way. I do it another way. I don't think about the keys or the fingering or whatever, well, maybe I do think about the fingering, but I actually think more about the keyboard itself, okay? And I personally think 
If you're going to be learning the organ, you're going to be spending a lot of time looking at music up here, and your hands are down here, your feet are way down here, okay? So, you know, just moving around all the time, you can minimize that if you actually get your fingers to memorize where the notes are, okay? Where the notes are. For example, I have a group of three, let's say, white keys. They're actually black on this organ because it's the other way around, but let's pretend we're playing the piano. Here are the three white keys for my fingers, one, two, three of C major. Here are the four keys for the last four, okay? So if we memorize that, there's three, and they're based around the two black notes there, and here's four based around the three black notes here. With me so far? If we take F major, we're going to go in the flat direction now, okay? So C major has no sharps or flats. Let's go to F major, which has one flat, B flat. Let's go to F major. So we have our one, two, three, four. That's how it starts. And then we have our three group to finish it. Okay? And then we start again. Understand? If we now add another flat, we're going to go to B flat major. So C major has nothing. F has one flat. B flat has two flats. Okay? So we start here. And the B flat, when it starts, is at the end of my four group. Understand? It's at the end of this group. My fingers are always ready in this group. They're ready to play. Here's finger four, B. Now, what's, what's next? Okay, I need to get to C, but that's, that's my three group, so I start with one. Okay, and here's my four group again. Understand? I've always got my fingers ready for the three group, ready for the four group. Here is E flat major with three flats. Now, same thing. It's at the end of my three group, okay, my three finger group. There it is. Thumb under for my four group. And then. Understand? The next one with four flats is then A flat. Where's A flat? It's in the middle of my four group. So there's my fingers ready for the four group. Start. Here comes the thumb for the three group. Understand? After D flat comes G flat. And G flat. Oh no, hold on, was that A flat? That was A flat, wasn't it? Now it's D flat with uh, one, two, three, four, five flats. There it is. In my three group, yeah? So I'm gonna start with finger two. Here's finger one in the four group. There's my fingers ready for the four group. Okay? If we go downwards, you actually see how it works more easily. We're going down, so here's my four group. Finger four is going over. Here's my three group, so finger three is going over, and so on and so on. The idea is, Oops. The idea is, he said, and then made, promptly made a mistake, the idea is you can do this without looking. That's the idea. We continue, we get to G flat, which is the last one, basically. So start of the four, four group, as it were, finger two there. Now it's C flat this time, but it's still finger one. It's, that's my three group now. Is it C or C flat? Well, it's still a C of some sort. Oops. And I was already in C-flat major there. I'm thinking ahead. This is confusing for me. Some people have said, oh, I didn't know you could speak English. Um, well, I am from Scotland, so I should be able to speak English. Uh, I've just been living in Germany for years, and my first videos were in German. So I'm doing this all in German and English, OK? So there we are. We were in G-flat major there, and I automatically sw swapped to C-flat major, which is, hold on, that's B major. And it, we know it has the, the same uh, fingering as the other scales in the other direction, OK? That may have been a bit complicated at the beginning, but if you remember that there's a group of three keys here and a group of four keys there. Now, this is for the right hand, okay? In the left hand, it's slightly different. We'll cover that at another time, okay? We're just going to talk about basics here today, okay? If you can sit down at an instrument and feel the keys, don't look, feel the keys. So here, I've got my keyboard. So there I have two black keys, as it were. So I know that that's going to be my three-finger group, okay? And the key signature of the key I'm in dictates where the white notes and the black notes are. Okay, so is it finger one on C or C flat? Is it finger two on D or D flat? Is it finger three on E or E flat? It's always going to be the same. And the same in the four group there. So if we decide, my wife wants to remain anonymous, she refuses to speak in these videos, but I'm going to say, do we want C major, F major, B flat major? We want B flat major. We did that in German as well. So we want B flat major. So what I can do, I don't need to look. And I won't look. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to feel for my little key. So there's two and there's three. Aha. So that 
is B flat, and B flat is automatically the finger four goes. It's in my four group, and it's up at the top there. So four, three, two, one, three goes over, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, three, two, one, four, and so on. Yeah, that's that's what has to happen. And when your fingers can do that automatically, then you're ready to move on. Right, that's enough of scales for today, um, but I do suggest that you sit down and try to do that, what I just described, okay, that, you know, feel where everything is, so that you can sit down and play everything, for example, I can feel my way around the keyboard here, hands, keyboard, so I can feel my way around the keyboard and play an F minor chord, or I can let go again, I can feel around the keyboard and play, oh, where am I, here, I can play an um, E flat major chord, okay? That's the whole point. If, as soon as you can feel your way around and know what you're doing, your brain sort of does it for you, then the sooner you can get on to concentrating on the music itself. So, last time we opened up this wonderful old book, the organ book from Limburg. It's well over a hundred years old, it's ancient, and it's rather lovely actually. It's full of, it's full of ch church hymns that we don't have anymore. And just by, purely by chance, I opened it at this page last time, and it fits perfectly to Lent, the German word for Lent, fast inside. And this uh, hymn, I, I did say we were going to look at it this time. So what we're going to do is look at the first four bars of this music and decide how on earth are we going to play this in the organ. We've got, this looks like piano music. We've got an upper line and a lower line. And we have four parts, and you can see there's a soprano part, if this was going to be a choir singing, a soprano part with the stems pointing up, an alto part there with them down, and here in the bass clef, tenor pointing up, bass pointing down. So I've got two hands and two feet. Does that mean my left foot plays the bass part, my right foot plays the tenor part, my left hand plays the alto part, my right hand plays the soprano part? No, it doesn't mean that. What does it mean then? Well, let's find out. Let's start from the beginning. We have an F minor melody. Here's the soprano line, just the first four bars. Okay? That's easy enough, okay? We can, sp we can play the melody nice and easy, nothing to worry about. So what do we do with the rest of it? How about we look at the bass part? This is the very lower part. And I am going to play this with the pedals. So a mixture of my left and right feet. Um, we're not going to do pedals today. It's going to be too much in one. But we'll do pedals next time, probably. You know, what do I play with my left foot, with my right foot, with my toes, with my heels? Where do I play? Well, let's play this line here. That's me playing with my big clumpy boots on, okay? We've had this discussion many times about organ shoes. We'll get round to it one day, probably. So, now what do I have already? I have the bass line and I have the melody line. So let me play those together, see what that sounds like. So, coordination part one, right hand and feet. Some purists out there are going to be saying, oh, you keep looking at your feet. Yes, and why not? I know plenty concert organists, international concert organists, who still look at their feet. What's wrong with that? I don't know any concert pianists who don't look at their hands. Why shouldn't you look at your feet? Anyway, let's get back. What do we do with the other two lines then? Let's look at this tenor line, as it were. So it's the bass clef with the stems pointing up. That could just be played with my left hand. On its own, it doesn't really do very much, does it? So if I mix that with the melody together, so I've got two parts now, I've got my soprano part up here, my melody, and I've got this tenor line in my left hand. What does that sound like? Could it be the alto line? So here's the alto line in the middle. How do I, how do, I do that? Do I use my left hand and my right hand, sort of mix around? 
Do I just use my left hand? Do I just use my right hand? I'll play the alto line on its own. On its own it doesn't really do very much. How about I use my right hand to play both of those lines together, soprano and alto. First of all, let's see if it's possible, and then we'll see what it sounds like. Okay, that sounds fine, and it was doable with one hand. How about we do this right hand thing with the feet together? So it's just the right hand, the melody, and the alto line and my feet here with the bass line. Left hand behind my back. Anyone notice the mistake? Yeah? When you start coordinating hands and feet together, it's going to be difficult at the beginning, okay? Take your time. If it didn't work first time, do it really slowly. Think ahead. Now, I don't know if you noticed, there was that mistake again. Did anyone notice what I did? Zoom in on the hands and I'll show you what I did. I forgot to let go of that note. I still had this one hanging there, yeah? My lazy thumb forgot to do what it's supposed to do. So always make sure you're playing cleanly, okay? All these lines here have to be clean. And once you practice it a couple of times, you've got it all together. So that's the right hand and pedals taken care of. What about the left hand and pedals? Well, a lot of people find this the most difficult thing to do. I personally find it rather difficult as well, and I'm left-handed. I don't know if that means anything. So that was the left hand and the pedals together. Now that worked, okay? Now we have to piece it all together. And this, is the, this is the difficult part, okay? So you need to take your time. And this is where it really helps if your fingers know what's happening, okay? So you're concentrating on the music, watching where the movements are, and your fingers know where the keys are and know what to press. Hopefully, after a bit of practice, you get it right. Right, that's enough of that technical stuff for just now. We're going to play a little piece of music in a minute, but first I thought I might sort of ask a question or maybe ask a little favor. A number of people in comments or even in emails have asked me, if I want to learn the organ, is there any material out there, any books that teach me how to play the organ? Well, yes, there are. There are some very old ones and some very new ones. There are international books, German, Dutch, French, English, you name it. Everyone's written a book on how to play the organ. And some of them are very good. Some of them are geared towards kids learning to play the organ. Some of them are geared towards adults trying to play the organ. Some of them are geared towards, I have no idea who. It's difficult to tell. So the question is, would you be interested if I put together a sort of book of exercises and little tunes on how maybe to play the organ. And I think I would probably include some of the things that I do in my style, you know, not just churchy stuff, so no, no, a bit of the oompa oompa that people seem to like. Um, would you be interested in that? Uh, you know how to do it. Comments down below and we'll see where this takes us. Time for a piece of music. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna play a little piece of piano music that I found that we're going to sort of arrange for the organ. And uh, I'm just gonna use the tiny little flute stops because it's a very cute little piece. Um, and show you sort of what we can do. It's by an English um, composer called Alec Rowley. He's no longer with us, of course, and um, 
He wrote rather a lot of music for piano and organ and sort of small ensembles, chamber music, for example. He wrote some choir music and he even wrote some orchestral music. It's all very lovely, sort of very light music, if you like. And um, in addition to being a rather good pianist and organist himself, he was also a cinema organist. And this is a piece of music that I think still gets regularly played in the active British cinema organ scene. It's his humoresque, and it sounds something like this. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed our little piece of music at the end there. Um, next week we're back out and about visiting organs again, so I hope you uh, uh, join me again. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for uh, donating, perhaps. Thank you for... Um, I did say subscribing, didn't I? Don't forget, 10,000 subscriptions, Toccata and Fugue in D minor. And we might use that actually, we might use that piece uh, for the next How to Learn the Organ video just to show you how you go about getting your hands and feet round a piece of music like that. Um, it's not easy, but it might not be as difficult as you think. More on that in a future video. Anyway, have a good week. Enjoy the sun if it's sunny where you are. It certainly is here, as you can see. See you next time. Bye bye.